everyone, it's Maddie, and today I'm going to be trying out some chapter samplers that we got from Yelk. We had so many in our suitcase that we just thought the best way to use them is to do two try a chapter videos. So B picked the top five she wanted, and there's a link to her video in the cards, and then I got five that I was really looking forward to. So we're going to read the first couple of chapters, give you our thoughts, and then see if they're going to be added to our Goodreads list or list of proofs that we need to seek out before publication if they're that amazing. The first sampler I'm going to go for is Clean by Juno Dawson, and I know you can hardly see any of the cover for this one, so let's read. It's been approximately a minute since my last clip because that's how long it took me to read the one and a half pages that constitute the first chapter. Already I feel like I've got such a sense of this character's voice. She seems really bitter and kind of acidic as a character. She uses quite intense language, but also the emphasis she's putting on her clothing label and the party she was at makes me think that Gossip Girl was an apt comparison to make on the inside front cover. Immediately we're thrown into a world where Lexi is being carted away on an intervention for her drug abuse problem, and that's never really something I've read about before, probably because it's a little bit intense for YA, and I think that's what Juno Dawson was telling me at her signing, that she was really proud of her publisher for taking something on with such a harsh theme. I just finished Clean and I absolutely loved it. The description was so apt and visceral and it feels like a very intense first person. Like everything that's written is a second by second relay of what Lexi's feeling. Although Juno told me that she was a pretty unlikable character, I think that's just because of the circumstance. Like she is a drug addict, so she's gonna be hard to get along with. But I really appreciate her voice and in this sampler, all she's done is get admitted to the rehab center. And it sounds like something I'd really enjoy because I always like settings that are slightly isolated with a limited character of characters that have some kind of mystery around them and I'm definitely getting all of these vibes from this. It comes out in April 2018 but it's definitely one I'm gonna have to seek out before that because I need to know what happens. Next I'm going with It Only Happens in the Movies. It's been a while since I've read a Holly Bourne book but I absolutely love the Spinster Club series and I think this is gonna have the same feminist vibes as it attacks the relationships that happen in films and it talks about how we can forgive abusive relationships if the male is attractive. <laughs> Okay, for some stupid reason it didn't click for me that it only happens in the movies would actually take place in a movie theatre. Audrey, the main character, has just got a new job in a small indie theatre. Her co-worker, Harry, is going to be the love interest, I assume, and she's told all about his bad reputation with girls, and then spends like a couple of pages just ranting about how girls in movies aren't actually real people. I thought that her whole rant, which goes on for, I'd assume, a whole A4 page, is a little bit heavy-handed. Like, yes, all of those things are wrong with romance films and the women are realistic, I do agree, but it just feels like she's trying to give every single example of her point. I've also heard Holly talk quite a lot about the subject herself. She did a panel called Life Advice with Hannah Witten and Sarah Bernard at Yelp, and we actually vlogged that panel if you wanted to see clips, and she talked about these very issues in the book, so I know it's really close to her heart, but I don't really know where I stand with this. If Audrey's been told that Harry is a bad boy and she's not gonna go for him, I'd be really surprised like what happens to make her go for him, especially especially because she has all of this meta-knowledge about romance films and how boys manipulate girls' feelings. Still chooses. But why though? I'm now picking up the sampler I'm most excited for, and that's The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill, which is a reimagining of The Little Mermaid through a searing feminist lens, as the blurb says. I'm really excited for this one because I've been in the mood to read more feminist fiction at the moment, especially because feminism in YA is one of the themes of my dissertation. So if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments. I know Louise O'Neill is definitely one to go to, and I've already read both of her other books and really enjoyed them. And it's been a while since I've read a fairy tale retelling as well, but it's one of my favorite genres, so let's see what I think. <laughs> This was so interesting because at the same time that it felt really familiar to the Little Mermaid story from Disney, with the same male statue that they'd salvaged that she has possession of, and by starting with the main mermaid who in this is not Ariel but Gaia, starting with her birthday and then introducing us to all of her sisters, there are a ton of names as well. I think I'm going to have to read the whole book in order to get them all straight in my head, so I'm really looking forward to seeing if they play a bigger role in the story. But the things that are different are the fact that Gaia actually has a mother figure in her grandmother, they have quite a close relationship and her grandmother is is the one to tell her about the world above, and also she's betrothed to someone, so she has a merman love interest rather than just a man, so hopefully she's not going to be experiencing love or romance of any kind for the first time on the land, because I know that that's probably the main problem that people have with The Little Mermaid, that she just falls in love at first sight and doesn't really know what she's getting into. This definitely delivered on the fairy tale vibe, it felt different to the other samplers I've read, so I'm excited for the fantasy threads that run through this one. If you're interested in fairy tale retellings and novels where the storytelling 
storytelling is really visible, then I'd really recommend picking this one up. But it's actually one of the latest releases for May 2018. So I'm kind of teased because this stopped just before the day where she gets to go up to land. So it stopped at a good point, like I do want to keep reading, but it's sad to think that I've got to wait nearly a year until I get to read the whole thing. Next I have Hope by Ryan Ivory, and this one comes out in September. So hopefully if I fall in love with this one, then I'll get to read it super soon. I also really love the cover for this, and you might not be able to tell from this tiny cover, but what's flying behind her hair are a bunch of music notes, and I've been really interested in reading more music-themed YA recently, so let's give this one a try. So in the first couple of chapters of Hope, we meet Hope who is the main character and she's just auditioned for a drama school in Dublin and been rejected. I really like when characters have a strong passion and are all about tracing their dreams, so I was really invested from the first second and wanted Hope to do well. But then we also get introduced to this boy called Riley who she doesn't know but is really invested in her own emotional state. I have a feeling that this is going to be insta-love almost, but kind of an insta-love I can get behind because even though they don't know each other, he's already communicated with her via text, email, and now he wants to Skype and I'm like, they're strangers, but I enjoy that Hope is thinking the exact same thing as I am, so hopefully their relationship will go a good pace. There's also an author's note at the end of the sampler which tells you about PMDD, which stands for Premenstrual Dysphoric Disorder, which is what Hope suffers from. It causes violent mood swings and depression, and it's something I've never heard about before, but apparently a lot of people suffer from it, and to have it in this is really important representation, so I'm really looking forward to how that plays into the story. The last chapter sampler I have is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart, and you can't really tell by this because it's disguised as a passport. I have no clue what it's about, just that there's a load of blonde hair on the cover. So with this sampler, I'm not actually going to bother reading the whole thing because I read a couple of pages and wasn't into it at all. It opens by telling you a whole page of setting, and I find that level of description really off-putting when I first start a book. Then we're introduced to the character, and this is told in third person, so she's a girl called Jewel who's just exercising, and then she's approached by this woman who's asking her about the hotel she's staying in and what's on offer. Then they have this really weird conversation about a trivia evening, and it's like, pop culture reference, pop culture reference, and I'm like, oh no! And then we're just like really lazily told about Jewel's personality. She believed that the best way to avoid having your heart broken was to pretend you didn't have one. That's so generic. She believed in action movies, weight training, the power of makeup, memorization, equal rights, and the idea that YouTube videos can teach you a million things that you wouldn't learn in college. And then there were a couple of pages that told you her tragic backstory in like 500 words that both her parents were killed and then she was approached by this secret agent that was telling her that her parents were really skilled and so she was taken to this boarding school thing to learn all about it. And I'm like, that's the book I want to read. That sounds so interesting. And yet it was glossed over in about five sentences. So I'm going to put this down just because I'm irritated with the way it's going. Although it does have some Hannah vibes and Hannah is one of my favorite films. So maybe I'll pick it up again later. But right now this just wasn't great. I'm actually really surprised that my favorite of the samplers I read was Clean by Juno Dawson. So I obviously started with the best and ended with the worst. Let me know which of the samplers you'd be most interested in reading and make sure to check out Bee's Yelp chapter sampler video as well which I'll leave a link to in the description. Thanks everyone so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!